I'm Mardu Sharma and this is Design Mind. Every episode we teach your mind about design by analysing a website. In this episode of Design Mind, we are looking at Melo, which sells simple home products for small spaces. The website is a great example of clean flat design. Melo. The first thing you'll notice about its website is its name. Melo. As the website says it out loud when you first visit the page. This is quite a smart idea, as Melo is a European name, which can make it difficult for the audience to know how to pronounce it. The woman's voice is quite upbeat, which adds a sense of character. The site uses cookies to ensure the voice clip is only heard when the user first visits the site, which is a good idea, as it would be annoying to hear it all the time. The site opens up with a large image and tagline that instantly tells the user what the site is about. This large image has plenty of impact, however, the way the tagline intersects with these bowls is a bit untidy. Scroll down and we get thumbnails from the shop and article section, which is a good way of highlighting key content on the site. These thumbnails are also used on the category pages, so we will now look at these category pages in more detail. The category pages are simply beautiful, utilising a clean and simple design which creates a high class feel of quality and opulence. The pages employ three techniques to make the product seem small. We will discuss the reasons as to why they have made the products look small in a minute, but for now we will discuss these three techniques. The first technique is the use of these thumbnail boxes, which are fairly small in size. The products are surrounded by grey space, which further shrinks them down. The second technique is the use of wide gutter spaces to separate the thumbnails. This again reduces the space available for the actual product, emphasising the small quality. The final technique is the small font size used for the captions. A bold, clean capital typeface is used, which allows the titles to be very small and still be legible. The titles are also abbreviated, so they are limited to one line, which further compacts them. You might be wondering why they have gone to such lengths to make the product seem small. The first obvious reason is that it relates to the tagline we saw earlier of simple solutions for small spaces. Everything about this design communicates small and simple, and so the site's brand is continually reinforced. The second reason is to do with quality. Precious items such as jewellery, are often presented as being small and perfectly formed, which adds to their value and beauty. By drawing on these techniques, Milo is also able to associate its products with values of quality, preciousness and desirability. Another nice feature about the thumbnails is that pricing information is hidden until the user hovers over a product, which is a good way of reducing clutter. Let's analyse the product pages. The product pages are for a simple two-column layout with images on the left and text on the right. Products are shown from a variety of angles, which is a great way of giving the audience a feel for the product. As the user scrolls down, the product information remains visible on the right, which is a nice touch. The product information is cleanly laid out, with a strong hierarchy to organise information. The light grey colour scheme stops the text from being too overwhelming and also creates a modern feel. At the bottom are these links. The share one is self-explanatory, but these details and question links don't seem to do anything. Underneath is the related product section and the footer which nicely frames off the page. Let's analyse the shopping cart. The shopping cart is essentially just a menu. This is a great way of letting the user instantly see what items they have purchased. However, it can become a bit cumbersome to browse if there are too many items, as the menu does not scroll with the page, so the bottom items are cut off. Let's look at the actual checkout itself. The checkout page is split into two columns with a list of products on the left and photos on the right. This is quite an unusual layout, as I've never seen a site display as checkout like this. On the downside, it doesn't seem to bring any benefit, and having the products listed twice is a bit redundant. These quantity fields are also a bit vague, as it's not clear that they can be used to change the quantities of the items in the cart. 
There also doesn't seem to be an easy way to delete products from the cart, other than typing a zero in the box and then hitting the update button. Let's look at the articles section. The layout of the articles section is virtually the same as the shop category pages, using a similar style of thumbnail. The individual article pages are also quite similar to the shop product pages, using a clean layout and a photo-led approach. The main problem with the blog section is that it seems a bit irrelevant. It offers inspiration, but the topics it covers aren't always connected to the products Milo sells. For example, this article focuses on smoke photos. Whereas this article focuses on wooden toys, none of these are products which are sold on the site. When the articles do relate to house topics, such as this one on tranquil homes, they don't seem to link to relevant products on the site. For example, this article would have been a perfect opportunity to showcase some of the more minimalist products that are sold on Milo, but the article doesn't do that. One could argue that by not linking back to products, the article section can establish itself as an independent space for inspiration that audiences can trust. However, audiences generally want inspiration to decide what products to buy, and if the articles don't suggest any products, the usefulness of the articles are limited. Let's analyse the navigation on the site. The navigation is fairly simple, containing just a logo, links to the shop and article sections, and search and shopping cart links. The logo has an arrow, and clicking on it displays a pronunciation guide, together with a mission statement. This seems like an odd thing to place in the navigation bar. It would have been more suited to being placed in the footer. The placement of these shop and read links also seem odd. Seeing as the main purpose of the site is to sell products, it would have made more sense for this space to list store categories. The articles are a secondary function, so the link to them should be placed in the footer or on the home page. While this isn't a major problem, the main purpose of navigation is used to direct the user to key sections of a site, so it seems strange to give the article such a prominent placement. Let's finish this analysis by looking at the site on mobile. The product pages are very well designed on mobile. Instead of just collapsing into a single column, the layout has actually been optimised for a mobile experience. The key call to action buttons are moved to this tethered footer, which makes them instantly accessible. The secondary sections are displayed in this handy accordion menu. However, just like on desktop, the links to details and questions don't seem to actually do anything. Overall, Milo is a beautiful, clean and flat site. Its design helps to make its products seem like precious gems, creating messages of quality and opulence. That's it for this episode of Design Mind. A new episode of Design Mind is released every Monday and Thursday. Find us on the web at designmind.info. Our YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash designmindinfo. You can also find us on iTunes. We'd love it if you could leave us a review at any of these places. Until next time, happy designing.